Disclaimer. The reason I may sound sick is because my body is currently severely compromised. My immune system believes that its lifelong enemy has returned once again to wreak havoc on my insides. My immune system is a fucking moron. It is unleashing all it's got right inside my nasal cavity and my throat in order to wipe out any pollen unfortunate enough to make its way into me. Rest assured, plant cum, you will be annihilated and I will see you again for a rematch next year. What a do, gang. You'll never believe what happened. I was visited by Lady Nostalgia. Lady what? Lady Nostalgia. I am sure you are all familiar with the sudden urge of wanting to play a game from your youth. It grows day by day until you are unable to function normally and eventually, like an addict, you relapse. You go back to whatever game a Lady Nostalgia revived the memory of. Sometimes a benevolent spirit other times, a cruel bitch aiming to destroy all fond memories of a game you believed to have been good. So, there I was, doing my thing, minding my business, and she just appeared out of nowhere. She grabbed me by the hand and led me to a lone sandal, just laying there. I wasn't sure what it was all about, but I went ahead to examine it nevertheless. When I turned back to face the lady, she was gone. Poof, vanished, just like that. Flabbergasted, I took it back home with me. I couldn't figure it out. Why did she lead me to a sandal? What am I supposed to do with it? The longer I lingered in its vicinity, the stranger I felt. This continued for a while until one night I awoke to a queer sound. I got out of bed to investigate and when I entered the room wherein the sandal resided, everything became clear. Lady Nostalgia brought me a gift, a blast from the past. Memories began flooding my hippocampus, memories of swords and sandals too. A flash game every able-bodied son must have played back in the day to prove his worth to his forebearers, to prove his strength, to grow into the ultimate alpha male we were all destined to be. Stick around until the end of the video for a shot at winning a copy of Swords and Sandals Classic Collection. Swords and Sandals 2, a game with some sandals and a lot of swords. Sponsored by sandals themselves. Sentient sandals. What are sandals? Sandals are a type of footwear, footwear that tends to be comfortable and unobstructive. Listen, do me a favor, focus on your breath. In and out. In and out. Good, good. You're doing great. Now, I need you to trust me, okay? I need you to stop breathing now. How does it feel? Does it feel good? No, it definitely doesn't. You can resume breathing now. Thank you for placing your trust in me. That's how your feet feel like when you shove them into uncomfortable shoes or boots for the entire day. Tell me, why do you treat your lungs differently than you do your feet? Are your lungs so much better? Sure, you can't live without them pumping oxygen into your bloodstream, but life would sure be much worse without feet too. They deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. You wouldn't want your lungs and airways to be full of fungus, so tell me why you deem it appropriate to force your feet into a continuous struggle against bacteria, fungi and viruses. It's, it's time, time to, to stop. stop! Look at your sad feet. Look at them! They're tired of the never-ending struggle. It's high time you show them the respect they deserve by buying them a pair, or better yet, a couple of pairs of sandals from Cody's store. That's right, your boy George has gone destitute, and as a result he's partnered up with Jack from Etsy to bring you and your feet the most comfortable sandals available to the general public. What's that you say? You don't think women will find you attractive in sandals? Think again. This chick seems to be really impressed with the dude standing on top of the dining room table. You ain't seen nothing yet though, check this out. One second you need a sandal, the next you need to cover your eyes. Cody's has got you covered. Wow. Look at them, they seem to be so comfy. Follow the link in the description to get you a pair of the freshest sandies from Cody's store at an unprecedented discount of 10%. Trust me, I wouldn't dream of milking my own viewers. 
your feet will thank you. As will the nostrils of the types of people who ask you to take off your shoes immediately upon entering their apparently immaculate abode. Cody store, sandals, opposite gender, get some. Back to the game now. Swords and Sandals 2 Classic is a wonderful little game brought back to life via the necromantic powers of our lord and saviour, Gaben. Unfortunately, you cannot buy just the aforementioned title by itself. Instead, it is sold as part of the Swords and Sandals Classic collection for £7 and 20 pence. So like 10 euros or 30 dollars, give or take. The collection consists of the following titles. Swords and Sandals 1 Gladiator The Progenitor Seems fine on the surface, but once you get into it, the walls are beginning to crack. This was my first attempt to play Gladiator, and as you can see, it went swimmingly. Swords and Sandals 2, Emperor's Reign, the one and only Swords and Sandals. The one we all played and struggled with during Adobe Flash's heyday, the subject of the review. Swords and Sandals 3, Gladiator Ultratus, departure from the well-established formula. 3 takes the game in the mobile gaming direction and just, what the fuck is this? Swords and Sandals 4 Tavern Quests continues the course the third one set the franchise on. Swords and Sandals Crusader, I don't even know how you take the second entry into the series and somehow eventually end up with this knockoff of civilization. Swords and Sandals Mini Fighters and Gross Out Battle for Sludge Valley. Let me be frank with you, I didn't bother playing any of these two. Not even for a second. Oliver Joyce, please. Stop it. Get some help. Swords and Sandals 2, a game wherein, contrary to what you may think, you play as neither a sword nor a sandal. Instead, you take control of a downtrodden slave marked for death by Emperor Antares. Fuck him, by the way. You are sent into the gladiator pit to fight a disabled senior citizen. Naturally, after showing him the respect he deserves, the poor man falls to the ground inexplicably after receiving the sharp end of the rusty knife you were given to his abdomen. The Emperor grants you a hefty sum of cash for getting rid of an extra mouth to feed and you are sent on your way to duel your way to victory. You have several attributes to dump skill points into. Most of them serve as a fantastic way of wasting said points. For example, Charisma makes earning gold easier at the start of your journey, as well as making Taunt slightly more effective. What the game doesn't tell you, however, is that if you venture far enough, every fight will yield the maximum amount of gold you could win regardless of your Charisma being at a respectable 1 or psychotic 40. Magicka seems interesting. You can teleport, you can go strike your foes from the far end of the arena, set them ablaze or give them the old Pikachu treatment. The problem with magic though is that like most elements of this wonderful and deranged experiment of a game is somewhat unbalanced. You see, magic is expensive. This witch is quite greedy and so you can't actually afford any spells early on. Which means that you'd first have to go either full agility or strength up until you can afford spells and that just doesn't sit with me. If I'm already 20 levels deep into stretching my ever-growing muscles, then I'm not just going to randomly stop just to cast a shitty fireball when I'm already raining death on my foes from afar. Agility grants you access to powerful, albeit slow, ranged combat. You see, the AI in Swords and Sandals 2 is artificial for sure. The intelligent part is the one I am questioning. More often than not, you're left watching a random string of actions which may or mayn't make much sense. Why fire at me with your bow or slingshot when you can yell? Why get into striking distance to me when you can impersonate a frog and jump from left to right? If you go agility, you will eventually become a human equivalent of an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of destroying any who dare to oppose you with somewhat accurate attacks. This brings me to defense, another statistic worth investing into, just not early on. In the beginning, you need to focus on your damage output. Defense is great when enemies deal hundreds of damage, not 40. And this brings me to attack, which increases your chances of actually hitting your opponent. I don't know the exact workings of attack versus defense equals X. Just know that having a higher attack value than your opponent's defense is usually a good thing. Strength is another primary stat. It directly boosts your damage output. It's great at the start of the game to get you through John the Butcher. Unfortunately, it falls off quite hard later on. You see, if you go strength, you also need to go vitality, because you're constantly in close quarters and you just don't have enough skill points to invest into strength 
attack and vitality at the same time. With agility you can pretty much ignore every single stat and just dump everything into it and attack. That will get you through the game. Lastly we have stamina. Stamina is a classic case of you want it, but do you need it? Thanks grandma, I finally understand it. The more stamina you have, the more actions you need to perform before you need to take an ultra quick nap wasting your turn. Can you get through the game without it though? Absolutely. Swords and Sandals 2 is at its peak when you are struggling with an early tournament boss, before your brain figures it all out. And truth be told, I wish mine never did. What wouldn't I give to go back to my prepubescent years for many reasons, most of which are unrelated to the subject matter at hand, so that I could just keep on playing, keep on failing and keep on trying. You feel me? The pride I felt back when I first defeated Marksman Dantus remains unmatched even as I near my 30s. Tourneys 1 through 8 are the most fun and challenging. It gets a bit stale afterwards, and by a bit, I really mean a great fucking deal. Champions seem to lose their charm eventually, and more often than not some random mustachioed nuns sporting not a massive sword, nor a gigantic axe capable of cutting Mount Everest in half, but an enchanted fucking switchblade, about the same length as an unassuming erect cock, will pose a bigger threat than the divine angel, who happens to be one of the champions. Forgive me, Father Oliver. It's okay though, Swords and Sandals 2 was originally a flash game, it was never meant to be played for hours on end. Tell you what, if you want to experience unadulterated, stupid fun for a few hours then you really can't go wrong with SNS 2. Create a gladiator, die, create another one and die a little farther than before. That's what Swords and Sandals 2 is about, it's about figuring out what works and what doesn't. This being a rather antique flash game, it doesn't have much depth to it, but it can sure provide joy and lots of it to that decrepit mind of yours. Which really brings me to the main point of the video, millennials. Those of you born in the 80s don't count, you can fuck off to Boomerville where you belong. We are all collectively about to either cross or already have crossed the threshold of the 30 zone. The last stretch of our youth begins now. Do not squander it. Do not forsake thine youth like many of our brothers and sisters have. Do something with your life. Get off your ass and go do that thing you've always talked about but never did, despite the encouragement from thine peers. Trust me, I know. Swords and Sandals 2. Oliver's greatest achievement is worth it. Not because it's a great game, which it is for a few hours, but because the feels that Lady Nostalgia granted me were definitely worth the half an hour of work I had to do to be able to afford it. It is with great honor and privilege that I announce that yours truly managed to convince the creator of Swords and Sandals to grant him one code for a free copy of Swords and Sandals Classic Collection to give away to his viewers. The winner will be picked out of the comments section within seven days of publishing the review on YouTube Kids. I hereby raise a Negroni, recipe for which is at the end of the video, to hoping more than one person leaves a comment within that time span. Swords and Sandals Classic Collection. Buy it, but only if you had played it in the past. This one gets six pairs of differently colored feet clad in sandals to show my support of equality and acceptance out of seven LGBT something colored swords. That's it then chums, I'll see you soon. But maybe I won't, who knows eh? Aren't we, after all, in charge of our own decision making? Or is it perhaps a greater being that does it for us? Food for thought, I don't know. I'm about five pints of San Miguel into writing the script. Here's another Negroni to hoping I do see you soon though. Take it easy. Video sponsored solely by Lubomir Mitkov on Patreon. That's right, I have Patreon. Go and subscribe to it. Let's make me rich. Or at the very least, let's allow me to leave my shitty job so I can focus on making more mediocre content for you to mildly enjoy. How to make a Negroni? What even is a Negroni? Making a Negroni is not complicated, it is a deliciously bitter cocktail. You'll need 25 ml of the following. Sweet vermouth, personally I use Belsazar red. Campari, an Italian liqueur. Dry gin, again personally I use Chase GB. And an orange, the fruit not the color. 
Chill the glass meant for consumption using ice and preferably water. Other liquids such as oil or egg whites can be used as well. Then grab yourself a receptacle meant for mixing. Add some ice cubes, all the ingredients and stir for about 30 seconds. Personally, I prefer mine less diluted, so I tend to mix mine for only about 20. Once the drink is ready, empty your now super chilled glass, fill it up with fresh ice and pour the contents of the mixing glass over it. Garnish with an orange twist. Voila. I think I'm well read. I think I'm well spoken. I think I'm well above average. It is important to me to carry myself in a manner where people are going to say, you know what, he knows what he's doing.